Welcome to our case on uh, carotid cavernous fistula. Uh, we're going to go through some anatomy and some uh, of the methods on how we treat uh, cavernous uh, uh, fistula. And uh, hope you enjoy it. So uh, when a patient has a uh, fistula of the cavernous sinus, uh, they often present with a pulsatile tinnitus, which is like a whooshing. So they whoosh, 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 which is very different than the normal type of tinnitus where it's like a type thing. So this is uh, very classic for a fistula and including a cavernous sinus fistula. And our patient did have a pulsatile tinnitus. She also had a very injected or red eye uh, just on that left side. And she certainly was having uh, double vision, which is also called diplopia. And that's caused by uh, the cranial nerves that control the muscles of the eyeball uh, being weakened by the pressure inside the cavernous sinus. And they aren't able to work as well. And so the, the eyes don't move in what we call conjugate gaze, meaning they go together. So that's how that happens. And you can also get some blurred vision. The CTA, and this is how we diagnose this patient's carotid cavernous fistula. Uh, we have circled here nicely the engorged uh, superior ophthalmic vein, which is being filled with arterial blood because of the fistula. It's taking blood from the arterial side and shunting it over to the venous side, and the veins aren't able to really handle that. They're not built for that, so they're really enlarged. And uh, this is the superior ophthalmic vein uh, that is pathognomonic, very diagnostic for a carotid cavernous fistula. This is an angiogram. Uh, this is an external carotid artery injection, meaning that you're not supposed to see any of the brain veins or brain arteries. You're only supposed to see the arteries that are going to the scalp, the dura, which is the wrapping of the brain, the face, the ear, and, and such, uh, and so on, so on. Um, but in this case, because we have a fistula from the carotid circulation to the cavernous sinus, we're seeing these small arterial pedicles kind of whittle their way towards the cavernous sinus and giving arterial flow into the cavernous sinus. So it's filling very early in the same time frame as our arteries. And you can see that as it goes to the left side of the screen there, that is the superior ophthalmic vein filling very early. It's very large and that is a big problem. And that's why the patient is having the symptoms that she's having. Here are some excellent AP views up top and a lateral view down low, again showing those small arterial pedicles that are the hairy kind of wispy vessels that are going to the big blobus vein, and that is a cavernous carotid fistula. We filled this, uh, this fistula with uh, coils, and then we subsequently filled the coil mask with onyx. It's my favorite way to treat a cavernous carotid fistula uh, because it really seals it up nice and you get a great result. Um, and you can see this is an external carotid artery injection the way it should look. You see just the arteries. You don't see the veins. The fistula is kind of that, I always like to compare this almost to predator where you can kind of see it, but you can't see it, uh, is the, the kind of very light mass there with the arrow pointing at it. Um, it's because we've subtracted it out with our uh, uh, computers uh, that do the digital subtraction and geography. And uh, that's what a treated cavernous carotid fistula looks like. It's really satisfying about these patients is they get better typically in like 12 to 24 hours. Their eyes less injected, their double vision can often resolve uh, pretty quickly. And uh, especially if they have that proptosis or exophthalmos where the eyes protruding, you can already see that resolve and it's very satisfying. And the biggest thing for patients often is that pulsatile tinnitus. It, it can make it so you can't sleep well. It can be very disruptive. Uh, and when they have heard it for years and years and years, and then you treat the fistula and it's gone, I've had a patient in tears uh, with joy because it was finally gone. So it's, it's very rewarding for patients as well. And this is a nice comparison where you really see that venous pouch and that venous early filling and drainage gone compared uh, from the pre-treatment to the post-treatment. That's how you do it.